Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both sheep and cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. And the Jews said to him, what sign can you show for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and within three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, the temple has been under construction for 46 years. How will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he had been raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Today we have John's account of Jesus clearing the temple. In the other three accounts by Mark and Luke, and Matthew, Jesus clears the temple at the end of his ministry in Holy Week. And we'll hear about that when we come to Holy Week. And there are some, it's a suggestion that perhaps it is actually the clearing the temple that makes the Jewish authorities act against Jesus. Here he is attacking the center of Jewish life and worship. And this is making a realization that he has become dangerous and needs to be dealt with. In John, Jesus clears the temple at the beginning of his ministry. And uh, he clears the temple and then goes off and continues his ministry. Now, what the historical situation is, we just don't know. And we have to remember the gospel writers are not writing history, are not writing journalism. They're writing a theological work that is asking people to reflect on who this Jesus is and his relationship with God and who God is revealed through Jesus and bringing us to a place of faith. So they will move the uh, events around to suit their theological needs and uh, so we can't expect them to write as a historian or a journalist would today it wasn't of their culture that's something we've created within our own culture and we value they didn't and it's just one of those differences between uh, their days and our days so why does John have Jesus clearing the temple at the beginning of his ministry well, some have suggested because uh, he disagreed with the trading, that he was somehow against the commercialism. But in reality, the traders who were trading there were a necessary part of um, Jewish life. The temple was the center of Jewish faith. Um, it's where Jews believed God's presence, the Shekinah, was the most intense actually in the temple. And if you were a Jew, you had to come regularly to the temple to pray and to offer sacrifices and to make offering. This was part of the life of the Jew. Um, and um, the, what you did during the other times was more, less important. So Jewish Judaism at this time was very much a temple-centered religion. Uh, what happens is in the year 70 AD, the Jews revolt against Rome and the temple is destroyed and Jews have to reinvent their faith without the temple. But in Jesus' day, the temple was the absolute center of, what it, of Jewish religion and Jewish faith. And so when you came, you needed to uh, get the coins. You had to pay the temple tax in, and make your offering in. You had to buy the animals you needed to sacrifice. And it seemed that the whole system was geared up for you to do that in Jerusalem. These animals uh, that we need sacrifice were imported from, we now know, a huge area, far away as Saudi Arabia, what is today Iraq, up into um, Lebanon, uh, to, to what is today Turkey and from Egypt. So a huge area where these animals were being brought in and it was so they were providing a essential service. So I don't think Jesus was against them for selling. And there's been suggestions also that they ripped people off. I'm not sure that that's what was bothering Jesus. But what does seem to be the problem is they had moved in and taken over a place called the Court of the Gentiles. And this was the place where those 
people who weren't Jewish were allowed to come and see the temple. And many of those people would have been attracted to the Jewish faith. There seemed to be quite a few people in, in Jesus' day who were attracted to the Jesus, Jew, Jewish faith, uh, but yet couldn't make the leap to become Jewish for all sorts of reasons. Um, and these people were called God-fearers. And it had to do with the requirements of what it became a, mean to become a Jew and what it meant with your relationship with your family and your business and your life and your place in society. So these people admired Judaism, saw something very valuable there, but couldn't make that leap. And this area, the court of the Gentiles, was the place they could come. And while they weren't fully in the temple and fully in God's presence, they were getting closer and closer. So it was a drawing near to God place. And Jesus clears it so they have the space to get nearer to God because it had been taken over by all this trading, as essential as it was. Why? So, in a sense, Jesus comes out of in John out of the 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 wilderness and clears the temple. And what's going on here, I think, is this, one of the central understandings of Lent. It's that taking the space to get ourselves right with God, to get an understanding of where our lives are and where we are with God, and to clear, and to do that, sometimes we need to get away into the wilderness, and sometimes we need to clear away some of the clutter of our lives. I think all of us have had the experience, particularly we who are wealthy Westerners, and we have so much stuff that sometimes the stuff gets in our way, and sometimes we just have to have a clear out of clothes we no longer wear, or books we no longer read, or albums or CDs or videos or DVDs or all sorts of things that we no longer need and we if we're good about it we take them down to the um, charity shops and we hope someone will buy them and raise money for the charities and will be used by other people so they just to get thrown away and too often sometimes we just end up throwing these things away and how wasteful that is but we realize that sometimes just the clutter gets in our way and I think all of us have also had the experience of being at home, and particularly at this time of year, uh, this time of life when we've been in lockdown, that things have just got gathered around uh, papers and books and other finale gets put away. We just eventually sometimes we just have to say, all right, everyone, put it all away so we can clear the space so we can see. I think parents know that experience uh, better than most with their children and their toys and their possessions. Sometimes we just just, OK, everyone, tidy up. Uh, I remember one of the nurseries my children went to, they had the phrase, which I loved, use, choose it, use it, put it away. Choose it, use it, put it away. And maybe even as adults, sometimes we need to hear that. So we all know that we, our lives get cluttered up with all sorts of things. We get ourselves caught up in meetings and activities and uh, all sorts of things. And our lives just get filled. We just don't have time to think to reflect, to make priorities. Things just roll from one to the next. And I think Lent is that time when we realize, like Jesus, that that clutter that's filling that place is actually keeping us from God. And so Lent is that time to declutter our lives a bit, let go of some things, um, make some space so we can come closer to God. One of the strange things about uh, the spiritual life is that quite often we feel far from God. And being the people we are, we think, well, that's God's withdrawn from me. God's gone away. Um, God's not here. He's not listening. He's not, you know, he's just gone far away. When in reality, it's not God's problem. It's ours. We're the ones who've put up the barriers. We're the ones who fill our life with noise and activity and all sort of clutter that keeps us from being, seeing God. But in spite of all that, he is so close to us. He is still there. It is us who can't see him. It's not him who can't see us. It is us who's withdrawn from him, not him who's withdrawn from us. So perhaps as a little spiritual discipline over the next week, just think of some of the clutter in your life, not the physical clutter, but the internal clutter that's just filling your life that perhaps just needs to be tidied up put away needs maybe perhaps some of it needs to be sent to the charity shop some of it needs to be thrown away some of it needs to be stored away for a long time but find some of that clutter and clear a bit of it up and see in that little space you've created if you can find 
God. Thank you.